Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video where I'm going to give you a lots of tips for your cabin crew interview. And on this video, what we're going to talk about are the do's and don'ts that I have for you during your cabin crew interview. If you're interested, just keep on watching. So let's just dive right into it. Um, the do's first and then we're going to talk about the don'ts. Uh, but before that, I would like to invite you to join my masterclass. Those of you who are asking me a lot of questions about different tips on how I could help you pass the flight attendant uh, interview because during school they won't teach you that. During um, any you know flight attendant school, they won't even teach you so much about you know the different psychologies and the mechanics and the rationalities why recruitment is doing is happening like this so and also you will never know why out of a thousand only 15 or 10 gets the job it's basically a multi uh, a multi preparation that you have to do it's not just the physical you also have to prepare mentally emotionally spiritually <laughs> and a lot of ways psychologically so this masterclass is designed to tackle and dive deep into those preparations that will help you get into the flight attendant career and this is all based on my personal experience I've done all the tips that I am teaching during my videos and also especially on my masterclass so if you want to study it further you know if you want to know everything which I cannot just send through a DM or a reply on an email everything all my knowledge is on that masterclass so go ahead and enroll now if you're serious about getting the job as a flight attendant the link will be down on the description box below so let's get started first do is to be on time if you could even earlier than on time so be early during your interview because a lot of other applicants will be there as well if especially if you are here in the Asia Pacific region let's just say you are being on time will end you up in the maybe middle of the line okay because a lot of other people are there on the venue so so early already so the cabin crew career doesn't permit being late not even one time because during a flight you can never be late so it's a good sign if you show the recruitment that you are on board with all the things about being on time because that will be an asset to them somebody is always late will never will not get the job of a flight attendant and even if they did they will easily get fired because of being late as well because the next do is to be prepared physically mentally and emotionally like i said earlier the reason why not lots of people get the job as a flight attendant because during the interview the recruiters are assessing you physically mentally emotionally and they're yeah. assessing you in different ways not just the face-to-face -face interview so if you go there only prepared physically then you can only pass the physical part of it and there's different other um, assessment that you have to go through that you don't know you are going through because it's not that obvious it's really subtle guys so that is why I've dedicated my book and my master class all through eight different ways of preparation the eight um, steps it covers all the different aspects of the human being and how you could prepare that and align that to the cabin crew position so go check out my book or my master class better yet because it's an online um, online class so easy to learn and a lot of my students are now flying already so the next do is do make friends with your seatmate yes this is one of the ways that they assess you if you really are friendly if you are able to build rapport to strangers right there and then during the recruitment day so you don't know that the recruitment are actually assessing you when they're passing through the line they're seeing who is talking to who or is everybody just sitting still and staying quiet <laughs> while it's not yet their turn so it's a much more better argument if during your interview you could say that you are friendly in fact i made five friends today during this interview so that's a really good example that you are you know setting us uh, giving them and it's something that they could actually see right there and there so your credibility 
and your chances of getting the job is much more higher than just someone who's saying uh, I'm really friendly so the next do that I want to talk about is do smile all the time like you won the lottery or it's your wedding day recently had the collaboration with Sir Mons of Fly High Manila and he is actually well connected with the airline companies here in the Philippines and he has lots of personal friends who talk to him all about you know the different recruitments you know they have you know inside information and one of the things that have that have uh, caught my attention during his stories is one time uh, his friend who is in the airline industry is talking about the aspirants and some aspirants are just smiling if they're talking to them but they could see the aspirants when they enter the door they're frowning when they're on the line they're frowning they only smile when it's their turn to smile okay so it it was a funny anecdote for them and his for him and his friends that it's so weird why people are like that and then during the inter their interview they will say that they are a cheerful personality <laughs> but then they could see with their eyes that the moment you enter the door the moment you are in line and the moment that you're, they are talking to you, they can see the difference. They are not blind guys. So this is one of the things that I'm telling you guys that they are assessing you but you don't know they're already assessing you. And you could only know these things if you have people who are working for the airlines or people who have been a cabin crew and then they have seen the recruitment and the recruiters will tell you things about why they hire this candidate and why they don't so that is why it's a very valuable information and that is what this channel is all about and in the hopes of that you could get the job for yourself as well because i believe that dreams do come true and if i was able to do it myself then you should be able to do it for you as well and the next do is do listen carefully to instructions and follow them to a t okay the instructions are very important it's the only way that they can assess how smart you are how is your listening skills and how can you follow instructions because during the career as a flight attendant so many instructions are given through the memo but nobody's gonna be there to look you know behind your shoulder and say oh, you're not doing this or you're not doing this right okay there's just the reporting system so they want people who could easily understand instructions and can easily implement them so one example is myself during my cabin crew interview for Qatar Airways I was instructed during the group uh, discussions uh, I was at the group second day already the group discussions the instructions was number one speak only English language and number two don't look at the recruiter just don't mind them think as if they're not in the room and go on with your activity I thought it wasn't important you know the instructions so I was doing the group activity but I'm still looking at the recruiter and we have like eye contact like two seconds eye contact they catch me looking at them so I wasn't able to go to the next round because of that and I know that is the only reason because I participated I was able to give a sound answer I included other people in my talk but yeah I didn't follow instructions so no matter how good you are but you didn't follow instructions you're still gonna get the cut okay next do the next two that I want to talk about is do stand straight all the time it might seem so obvious it might seem so like duh flight attendant job you have to be like poised all the time but if you are on the recruitment day and it takes from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. it's kind of hard to do guys so like train yourself to be poised all the time so that it won't be so hard anymore during the recruitment day but you have to remind yourself every time that you could to take care of your posture because you never know when the recruiters are assessing you when they're passing through the line or when they're looking at you standing there then you're already tired and you didn't you know you didn't, you didn't really look into yourself and you are already slouching because you're so tired during the day so always remember to mind your posture and stand straight all the time. The next two is do eye contact. Eye contact, not a really intense one, but just a healthy amount of eye contact with the recruiter and your group uh, group mates during the group discussion is a nice way to show that you are confident in yourself. Because some people who doesn't look other people in the eye are very suspicious 
or very shy okay so they don't want those two people in the company so if you have something to hide then you can't you can't look someone in the eye right that's really obvious so as well in a professional uh, situation you have to be able to look someone in the eye especially if you're already cabin crew you need to do that because you have to assess who among your passengers might be a hijacker okay so part of the security thing but yeah do maintain eye contact it conveys your confidence it conveys that you can be trusted what you're saying is something that can be trusted by the recruiter and it just says a lot about you so if you are uncomfortable with eye contact i have a tip in my previous video just rotate your eye i mean like do eye contact and then look away and then go back to the eye contact again if you can't just look at the sides of his eye or here at the triangle here it will seem like you're looking someone in the eye but not really so you won't feel so shy anymore you just put your eye rotate your eye from here here and here like a triangle just make a triangle out of the person's face so yeah it's a trick next thing that you should do is do listen to inspiring music or inspiring talks before the interview itself you don't know how much power it could give you guys if you are just in the zone in the moment and so happy during the interview oh my gosh it's contagious your enthusiasm will be contagious and the recruiter can definitely see that among all the seas of other applicants who are nervous and shaking and cannot talk straight because they're like their their heart is like going out of their chest so yeah it's gonna be a breath of fresh air for them so do listen to inspiring music and uh, when you do that you basically raise your aura in a very high field that you raise your aura that you're just a standout they can't explain why but you're a standout and the secret to that is you are in a good mood and to be in a good mood listen to amazing music um, inspiring music and if not do this tip do visualize yourself as a flight attendant already and that will make you so happy and if it doesn't make you happy when you visualize yourself as a flight attendant then what are you doing during the recruitment day don't apply for this job guys so only if it makes you happy if you could imagine yourself already wearing the uniform walking down the airport and going to paris that's what you should imagine and then it will just put you in this amazing mood that the recruiters can definitely sense and feel from you and that's my best tip for you guys to prepare spiritually okay it's also in the book and in the master class so last one our uh, last two do include others during the group discussion this is the key to pass the group discussion stage you have to include other people and acknowledge them during the group uh, activity so if somebody says something that is a good idea Maria uh, this is my piece this is my point of view how about you Diane what do you think so that's how you do it the group discussions do include other people last but not least do take deep breaths okay this is a very stressful situation when you are in an interview and everybody is beautiful and everybody's well spoken and you are like doubting yourself can i do it can i not do it will i get the job will i not very stressful so that's why take deep breaths to calm yourself and center yourself and focus during the interview this will save you the interview so also when you are talking if you could take a deep breath in between you will look so much more poised and uh, so much more like calm calmer than the other applicants and you will stand out because of that so yeah very important breathe guys breathe now let's go into the don'ts okay I have a few don'ts you don't mind because some of these things um, of course these are not gonna be the obvious ones but the things that I myself have done and I have then later on realized it's very very bad during the interview the first one is don't show any signs of negativity either by frowning negativity by saying something bad about your previous employer or saying something bad about your previous application during the same um, recruitment day okay so anything negative they will sometimes ask you uh, they will sometimes really test you on this like they will ask you negative questions like what is your weakness or they will ask you 
what happened in your last application why didn't you get in our company or why do you want to leave your current job so don't fall for the trick don't say anything negative just make sure that you say still stay positive even if you're explaining things during these questions okay so the first one is don't look at your phone you know we usually look at our phone by habit and yawn look bored space out sleep <laughs> when it's not your turn for the interview yet so you might be thinking ah, it's not yet my turn. I'm gonna relax no guys they're still assessing you find any reason to smile guys <laughs> all right so next thing that I want to tell you guys on the don't is don't compete with your co-applicants don't compete with them in your head don't compete in them during the group discussions because you need them you need them to show that you can do teamwork okay during the interview this could be really hard because our nature as human being is they will say ah she's up for the interview I'm up for the interview all of us are competing for the same position think of it as they are going to help you get the position if you could prove to the recruiter you can make friends with them then you are someone who can do teamwork and you are someone who is friendly you are someone who has people skills so look at them as people who can help you get the job and i know the temptation is so hard to always compare yourself with another candidate you know uh, i just would like to advise you against it because it could really stress you out during the day and you are already stressed out during the day because of the interview do not add into the stress by doing this unnecessary thing of comparing yourself with the other applicants because it could just ruin your game guys it could either make you arrogant or it could make you um, depressed because someone someone's always gonna be better than you someone's always gonna be you know uh, you're always gonna be better than someone else but that's not your job to judge it's the job of the recruiter to judge during the day so leave it to the recruiter okay next thing is I want to tell you guys do not rely on your good English I know we are all if you're Filipino you will think ah, I'm from the Philippines I'm naturally good at English so there's no way for me you know I don't really need to I don't really need to practice or memorize things like that but remember guys even beauty pageants or beauty queens have to practice speaking English to answers that they know might come up during the pageant it's kind of like the same situation here you are going on an interview during the interview you already know what are the possible questions that might come up then why won't you practice like beauty pageants do you know like the Queens do even if you're a guy why won't you practice like let's say presidents do because during press conference and things like that they already know and they already practice it they look into the mirror and they say they're ready answers in the mirror and they practice how they deliver it and that's how you wow an audience you have to practice it if you say nah ah, I have good English I don't have to to practice I can express myself well then good luck to you you're just gonna be like the 1,000 other people who went to the interview if you really want to stand out you're going to prepare for this interview like the Queens prepare for the interview like the presidents of the countries prepare for interviews okay you really have to practice it okay the last but not least don't show up during the interview without doing any research and your research on what the cabin crew uh, job is all about and your research about what the company is all about who their CEO is and What are the latest happenings during in the airline industry? So you really have to do your research because It shows that you are just you are really interested in this company and you're really interested in this position And you're not just somebody who's applying to anybody who is hiring at the moment. Okay, so that will help you stand out as well and that's a wrap that's all my do's and don'ts for you guys on this video i hope that you do enjoy it if you did let me know on the comments down below and as well as make sure that you check out my ready for takeoff master class the link will also be on the description that box below and yeah uh, i hope that this helped you good luck on your interview do like and subscribe on this channel for more tips like this and i will see you guys on the next one fly with you soon bye